What's up, y'all? This is the Young Legends Podcast. I'm your host, Caption, and I'm here with a very special guest today, Miss Mia Jackson. She is a New York-based comedian originally from Georgia. In 2017, she was selected as a new face by the Just for Last Comedy Festival in Montreal, and Atlanta's Creative Loafing named her the city's best stand-up. She has toured nationally with Amy Schumer and is a featured comic at festivals and clubs across the country. Her first stand-up set aired on October 2018, as part of Unprotected Sets, that's S-E-T-S, on Epics. Jackson has appeared on Nick Mom's Night Out, Viceland, Comedy Central's This Week at the Comedy Cellar, and was a semi-finalist on Season 9 of NBC's Last Comic Standing. She has appeared on Inside Amy Schumer and the movie Mother's Day. Mia, I am so excited to have you today. How are you doing today? I am doing all right. Yes, I am always in the midst of allergies and all that good stuff. So I'm surprisingly not coughing right now, right. but we'll, well see. We'll see how long that lasts. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, coughing is allowed, you know, as long as, uh, you know, as long as you don't get me sick somehow through this microphone <laughs> technology, we're good. <laughs> I think, I think you're safe. You're safe. Fantastic. Fantastic. Now, you live in New York and you are now a full-time comedian, which is a really big deal, but you weren't always from New York. You're from Georgia. I believe you were from Athens as well. Can you tell us kind of the story of the journey of you becoming a comedian? Start wherever you want and just kind of tell us how you got to where you are today. I'll tell you the origin story. So I actually, yeah, I am from Georgia. I'm originally from Columbus, Georgia, and I ended up in Athens, Georgia because of my, uh, where I went to college. So I went to the University of Georgia, go dog, woo, all that exciting stuff. And that's actually where I first got on stage. It was in Athens, Georgia at a little bar that was downstairs. But prior to that point, you know, I'd always kind of been fascinated by comedy. Like even as a kid, I would watch a lot of stand up. Like I remember being 11 and 12 and watching people's half hours or whatever, or whatever iteration of, of Comedy Central was out at the time. I can't remember if, if that's what it was actually called then, but it was some network that had a bunch of comedy and I would sit there and just watch all the, the stand-up segments and would call my friends and my cousins and we would talk about what we saw. And then by the time I got to high school, I went marching band and we would sit around and repeat everything that we had seen on Deaf Comedy Jam and Comic View and all that kind of stuff. So seeds were kind of planted early and it didn't really dawn on me that like, oh, that's a person's job. Like that's like, I just, you know, you just see these people fully formed performing and you're like, oh, they just did this thing. And then you don't think about how they got to that thing. But I can remember seeing comedians come to my college. And and then that was actually one of the turning points about maybe a year or so after I graduated. I um, had a friend that was still in school and she was on the student activities board. And student activities boards, you know, that, those are usually who will book and hire the comedians. And they brought a comedian to the school and she was like, you should come and you should meet him. And he was there with his manager and I'm like, how did this happen? Like, how do you do this? And he was like, well, are you getting on stage? And I was like, uh, like, no. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, so you need to be, you need to be writing. You need to have a, a notebook in your hand, a notebook, you know, pen and pencil, uh, microphone. That's all you need to be focused on right now. You know, because it, it's not a matter of somebody just throwing you on stage. And so that's kind of how it started, where I started taking notes, writing all this stuff down. And then maybe about a year and a half after that is the first time I actually got on stage. Like I went to an open mic and I'm the only woman at the show and I was there by myself. And I just remember one of the comics going, oh, you must want to be a comedian because you're here by yourself. You're not here supporting like your boyfriend is doing with comedy. So what's, what's happening here? So they were like, all right, why don't, you, why don't you come back next week? And then that's how I ended up on stage for the first time. <laughs> So that's how it started. That's how the journey initially started. And then fast forward, I ended up going full time because the job that I had, we both hated each other at the same time. And then I just kind of jumped into the world of being a full time comic. Yeah. So it sounds like you uh, got on stage, did your first open mic, and a year or two later, you went pro is what you're telling me. I am not telling you that at all. <laughs> it was not, this was not a year or two later at all. It was years later. <laughs> years, years 
later. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it would be nice, you know, and, and it's so many, just probably just one of the misconceptions where somebody might see a person on TV and they're like, oh my God, like that person's doing comedy, but they don't know that that person has probably been grinding it out, working in clubs for 15 to 20 years before you ever see them <laughs> putting That's, in the work. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, was it the old saying goes, it takes 10 years to become an overnight success? Um, Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. It is very true. And I like I remember when the first few seasons of Last Comic Standing came out. And I remember a lot of people who didn't understand comedy, just civilians of comedy. They'd be like, well, I've seen some of those people before. I've seen that person on this show or that show. Like, these aren't just unknowns trying to do it and you know and a lot of comedians had to say hey this is not like an american idol type show where you pluck someone from obscurity that's not to say that those people haven't been singing all their lives as well but it's like it's just a completely different world you know where yeah you could very possibly have an unknown singer that then ends up blowing up but for a comedian you have to have a lot of material and so if you see somebody on tv when they were going, well, hey, these people are professional. Why is this person on this reality show? And it's like, okay, well, if you want to go see that person in a club and then you find out that they only have those five minutes of material that you saw on TV, you're going to be really mad. So you want someone that knows what they're doing. So it's a lot of experience before you see a television spot. So you're telling me someone doesn't have to just come up with 10 minutes of material that they can do on the <laughs> on TV and just become a comedian? I <laughs> that is what I am saying. Yes. Yeah, you're just ruining dreams left and right. You're ruining, just killing, ruining, ru ruining. Because I mean, people, people for real, like literally, that's what they think. They they think that like you say, you know, and especially <laughs> I've run into this a lot with family members, or you know, to be like, hey, I'm funny, I should get on stage, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> go right ahead and go on and you are not going to be pleased with the results just because you're the funny person at work or the funny person in your family. And like, it still takes a skill set to be able to get on stage and have setups and punchlines and then to do it for an extended period of time. Okay. So now that you bursted the bubble of the public, <laughs> um, <laughs> Tell me about the process of writing comedy and performing, because what we see you're telling me basically is, is a bit of a finished product. So tell me about that process of developing that. Would they give you four or five minutes during Last Comic Standing, if that? We did three minutes. It was like it was three minutes when I did the show. And it was those three minutes that I did that still came from years you know, years of having performed before I actually got on the show. But just in general, you know, even if you're not building a set for TV, if you're just building a set just to, hey, you know, my goal, I want to be the MC at my local comedy club. And now I want to be the middle act. And I eventually want to be the, the headliner. You know, the, the MC is going to do anywhere from five to 10 minutes. The middle act can do anywhere from 20 to 30. And then the headliner, 45 to an hour, but the way you start building that material is you just start writing. And a lot of people have different processes, so I can't just say, oh, well, you need to sit down every day in front of the computer and write for 45 minutes, because some people do actually do that, and that's what works for them. But then you have other people who are like, oh, well, I have to actually go experience life. And then when I experience life, I'll get inspired and I'll write something then they might take that back to their computer or their phone or put it in their notes app and try to work out the material that way and then I know some comedian friends of mine are like oh yeah you know I, I kind of write from the stage and again but this comes after some years of experience not in the early days where the people are like oh well I have a an idea and I'm just going to talk through this idea while I'm on stage but in those early days of comedy when you're learning how to write and this is a setup this is a punchline this is a tag this is all a chunk of material that's grouped together when you're learning all those things just the building of material it's you're just writing and you know however you are inspired to write you start cataloging that info and you start 
putting it all together and then you start going on stage. And then once you get on stage, you then have to start recording those sets. And then that's whether, you know, you might be an audio person, you might be a video person, but whatever it takes for you to record that set and listen to learn your material. From that point, you go back and start making edits and you start going back and, and making changes. So it's always just a really, it's a process. It could take you <laughs> two months to work out two bits, <laughs> you know, just depending on what you got going on. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like a lot of work. I'm I'm sweating a little bit just hearing about it. But so when you say two months to work out two bits, how long are these bits that you're talking about generally? Like, oh my how much God. comedy are we talking about here is what I'm saying. <laughs> it could be, I mean, it could really be like even a, a, a joke that's a minute and a half. If you're trying to work out all the kinks and the nuances and making sure that you want this thing tight, you know, one or two or three minutes, like that could take a month. That could take a month and a half because you keep going up and then you try it again and you go and you try it again. You're just trying to hone and, and re move words around and switch things around because the first time you do a joke, it might kill that night. And then you go up the next night and you get no response at all. And then you go up that third night and the joke kind of gives a so-so response. And then you do it a fourth time and you're like, oh, it worked again. But like all those four times that you've gone up, you should have recorded all four of those times so you could listen to, hey, well, what made it kill the first night? What made it not work the second night? Or why did it get a so-so response on the third night? You know, and then you have a chance to go back and fix a lot of things. So, yeah, it can take a couple of months to go, oh, I feel comfortable with this new three to five minutes that I <laughs> that I just started working on. Yeah. Wow. So timing, you don't just tell a joke and you just timed it impeccably and then <laughs> made everybody laugh and then you just you can't repeat that same process i'm, I'm a little disappointed <laughs> right just, wouldn't it be so nice if you just went i woke up this morning and i wrote a new hours worth of material and all of it worked and it all killed like wouldn't that be that would be amazing but it does not work like that <laughs> yeah. like, it'd be so nice to be like hey i wrote two hour long specials this week yeah and i heard that uh comedians at their very best and most prolific drop a special can't drop a special once a year but that's because it took them the entire year to work out that material on the road and then mm -hmm. eventually it's like 12 months of blood sweat and tears and here you go here's 50 to 60 minutes of laughter but my soul is in this thing. Um, oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it, it could be things that you started out that year that, you, that you're just like, this is what I'm going to talk about and this is what's going to go in my set. And then by the time you record it, it could be the first 20 minutes you were talking about at the top of the year might not even show up in your set at all just because you dropped that material or decided it didn't fit with what you wanted to do in your hour. No, oh, that that must hurt a little bit to be like, oh, I I had this thing and now <laughs> yeah. I'm not using it. I worked so hard on that. I worked I'm months right. on this. I'm yeah. scrapping it. Oh. But it, it definitely happens because I've you know I've been around friends as they've got ready to work on specials. They were getting ready to record an album, and it's just a lot of oh, what about this joke? Or should I take this one out? Or it might be something that happened with a parallel thought type of thing where. You thought you had this great bit, then somebody drops a Netflix special and you're like, oh my God, that sounds exactly like the thing I was going to talk about. Mm -hmm. So now do you take this out? You know, so it's, so it's all kind of stuff where you just, <laughs> you know, anything could happen. Yeah. Yeah. That's, or something that's... that seems timely is no longer relevant. Wow. Yeah. I never really thought about that. Someone beating you to the punch of a joke. Yeah. Like, oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had a friend actually say that she was like, she said she was so excited about some bit where she's like oh my god and i don't think i've heard anybody say anything like this before and then she watched someone's netflix special and she was like no <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Ouch. i can't do it at all now because she's like they're totally gonna think i ripped this person off and she was like and i hadn't she had never heard of the comic before had never seen them and just so happened to be watching netflix and was like no no and no <laughs> So, right. yeah, yeah, it's tough. So, so tell me about your big break. Tell me about when you blew up 
because that's what happens, right? You blow up and then, <laughs> hey, look at me, world. Here I am. Right. You have that um, that magical one shot on television that then propels you into fame and fortune. And everyone knows your name and your face is on billboards. It happens every day, all the time. And I am also lying. That is not exactly what happens at all. Um, but as far as a, as a big break, I mean, that's the thing. I think it's that's a, a really big misconception. And that's the thing that I've just found out, obviously, just in life and just as I've been doing comedy, where it's not, sometimes it's not just one thing. You know, it's little small things that build up. Just, you know, you do this one show. Now you got that credit. You do this one thing. Now you got this credit. So now... For me, you know, you could be like, hey, hey, I didn't win last comic standing, but you know what? I can tell people I was on the show. So now I got something else on the resume. For example, my college agents, I remember them going, oh, we're pitching you for a gig, but they really want someone that's been on TV. So now that I've done several different things on TV, they're like, hey, we got this person. She was on this show, this show, and this show. So it's just a bunch of things that you're trying to, to get on the resume to help you you know, just get that visibility so that you can do what you, you know, whatever your goal is, whatever you want to do. So it's just a series of little things all along the way. And I try to tell people all the time, don't think just because you got that one viral video or you got the one spot where somebody saw you on a show, like that doesn't mean that things are going to just change and happen overnight for you. And again, that's something I have to tell, you know, the civilian people who aren't involved in comedy, but like with friends and family, where if I go, oh yeah, well, I'm going to be on, um, you know, I got this Comedy Central special coming out in the fall and people are like, oh my God, Comedy Central, that means everything's going to change because you got your special, you know? And then you're like, well, no, no, no. Like, it's great. You're like, no, 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 I'm excited. And this is a cool thing, but it's like, that's another thing along the way. It's just another step along the way where you're like, hey, I'm collecting all these credits and I'm doing all these things to help me along the way in my journey. Because it was the same thing with Last Comic Standing where people were like, oh my God, you're on Last Comic Standing. So you know what you got to do now? Now you need to get an assistant and now you need to get this. And I'm like, <laughs> slow down, like just calm down. I'm like, we don't even know what's going to happen on the show yet. So you need to, to relax, all right? Like you just need to calm down. Wow. People like just relax. So yeah, so it's just yeah, it's just a series of things. It's, it's not always one big break. And I'm not saying that it doesn't happen, but it it's rare that a one thing is going to propel somebody over to the top. Mm -hmm. That's that's good to know. So, it just sounds like as a comic you just have to keep hunting and killing. That's the best analogy I can come up with right now, <laughs> but but like you I, I guess you have to hunt and kill to eat and it's just a cycle of that and if you don't hunt then you don't eat does that sound about right yeah look you, you made it seem so much more dangerous um <laughs> that's look that's that's what's making me sweat i'm like i gotta go kill ah, no it is, it is a constant you know in the early stages of it until you start picking up managers and agents and and all that kind of stuff it's a lot of you advocating for yourself and finding gigs and finding places where you can go and perform and doing well at those places. You know, when you go to clubs that have open mics, a lot of times the clubs, like they're, they're looking at the people at the open mic to go, oh, is this our next crop of people who may end up becoming hosts at our club? Okay, and now we've seen this person grow from a host to, oh, maybe now this person can feature. And now maybe this person is going out on the road or somebody now calls that club and go, hey, can you recommend someone as you're coming up in a club and you wanted to do well and be seen, you know, that can lead to work as well. But it's still you just basically doing what you have to do and work hard for those things to even happen in the first place. But, yeah, but you're always trying to find work, trying to find, you know, what's the next thing can I do? Can I apply to this festival? Is this festival the right festival for me to be applying to? Should I move to this different city? And if I go to this different city, you know, what shows do I get on there? So it's always constantly looking, constantly trying to find what's going to be the next thing. Mm. But again, with the work involved as well. But yes, sure. if you want to say we're going out looking to kill, kill and hunt, then yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you're still doing open mics. 
That's uh, one thing I'm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, it's funny. I uh, was watching something with Kevin Hart and he was talking about working out. He was like, me and Chris Rock were at the comedy store and we were working out. And I was just like, oh, these guys too, huh? And I was like, you know, they just show up and they're at the open oh, mic. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh yeah, we're just, you know, we're just working out our material. That's what we're doing. I'm like, oh okay, you too, huh? Wow. Absolutely, yeah, it never ends. Now that you're a good comic, you are gonna always be doing it. I mean, it is, and you know, being at the, in New York and you know, same thing at the comedy cellar. You might look up one night and they'll be like, oh, Chris Rock is coming in, and they're like, oh, he's working on a new 20 minutes, or. You know, you might see, um, they're like, oh, Chappelle dropped in tonight or Amy Schumer dropped in. So, you, you know, mm. you might see one of these people just coming in and popping on the show because they're working out material. Because at this point, when you're super famous, you're pretty much doing theaters and arenas and you're not going to be able to <laughs> drop in and go, oh, you know, let me just put together an arena show tonight just to play around with people. <laughs> you know, yeah. you actually- have a you actually want to make sure what you're taking to that theater or arena show is good stuff so you got to go work it out in clubs first that makes that makes total sense so in your career of of doing comedy you've been doing it for a long time you've learned i'm sure a lot of life lessons that are very uh important to you what is just one life lesson that just kind of sticks out to you where you're just like people need to know this this is (laughs) Here, here's something I'm, I'm going to tell my kids, my grandkids and everybody else uh, who's young that's in my life. Here's what you got to know if you want to be successful. Yeah. <laughs> Here are a couple of things. One, uh, I learned very early in comedy. Um, I remember I worked with a hairliner who was just like, yeah, you know what? Best piece of advice I can give. He was like, don't be a jerk. And I was like, oh, <laughs> that's very simple and very, <laughs> it's very simple. It's, it's very easy. You know, he wasn't saying, hey, don't be yourself. He's just saying, hey, just don't be a jerk. Because one thing, and um, another comic also told me that I learned, which is also very true, is he would always tell me, you know what? One of my comedy friends would say, work gets work. Work gets work. And I used to be like, like what? Like when I first like, what do you, what do you mean? And he would go, well, you're probably going to get, most of your work is going to come from other comedians, you know, because if they see you at a show, then they might have a show somewhere. Then they're going to invite you to come do this thing or, or that thing. And so <clears throat> I think those two kind of run the hand in hand, like, hey, just be cool. Don't be a jerk. And usually that coupled with you being funny and being solid and consistent, that will get you work and that will get you recommended for things. And so those are super important. And then another thing, too, and it's really difficult to do but it's an important thing to try your best to do is just also just not compare either because that can kind of of drive you crazy because you know people do things at different timetables because i can remember sometimes in my early days being like well hey that person's working at all these clubs all the time like what are they doing that's different from me or what is this person doing or or you know and then and i'm like oh you know then after you talk to the person and you hang out with these people then you're like oh okay that's why you're getting these things because you're your our work ethic is different maybe i'm not doing what i'm supposed to do as a person and then even when you are doing everything that you're supposed to do as a person it's still not a good idea to compare just because you don't know you know, you don't know what people's experiences are. Like, it could be someone who has a great, solid, hot 30 minutes that works at a comedy club with a headliner. And then they're the middle act for that weekend. And they might work with that headliner that says, hey, you know what? I want you to be my opener. Come with me on the road. But it might just be because you and that person that weekend happened to mesh, happened to connect. But then you could work with another headliner who is just like, who never talks to you at all that whole weekend. Like, Hey, thanks. I'm here to do my job. And they never listen to your set. They never watch you. They never try to connect with you. So you can't be like, Oh man, so-and-so just got picked up out of obscurity and now they're on the road with this one person. And, and it could just be again that that weekend, they just so happened to connect with that person in a way that you did not. So you, you just can't compare. I mean, it's just, it's natural to want to do so, but when people say, yeah, you really got to focus on the things that you're doing and what you can do better and just whatever you're doing in general, that's really some of the best advice that I've learned because I, I realized like I stopped stressing out 
so much and I would be like, let me stop trying to keep up with what other, what is this person doing? What's this person doing? Like, it, and it, you know, makes your life a lot easier when you are just focused on what you're doing <laughs> and the things yeah. that you can control. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's something that I feel like not just young people, but everybody should kind of take into heart. I've, I heard a quote that said, a uh, comparison is the thief of joy. And really it's one of the quickest ways to really not be grateful and content with mm-hmm. what you have going on. And all you're doing is, you know, look at that guy's house is bigger than my house. Oh, mm-hmm. forget this house. Yeah. So that's, that's not a good way to live. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, not at all. Not at all. I can even remember as a kid, you know, being like that with my, um, I remember my dad telling me one time, just like, look, you know, the, the phrase, the keeping up with the Joneses. And he was just like, listen, he said, I'm going to just tell you right now, you know, you might, look at another family you might go man like everybody in that family like the the parents are driving the nicest cars the kids have the best clothes and they have this and they have that but you don't know what they did to get those things it could be a situation where yeah they are financially in a good place or they could also be in debt because they're trying to look good to these people who don't even care what they got going on (laughs) you know remember him telling me that really early like yeah just kind of pay attention to you know what you're doing to get the things that that you've gotten. So you just, you just don't know what other people have going on. And like you said, it is, it's, you can drive yourself crazy. And I've had comedy friends that will have these long chats sometimes where they're like, well, look at this person. And I watched this person. And how did this person get this over me? And I'm just like, that is, <laughs> that is going to drive you crazy. And it's not to say that you're not going to have moments where you get a little down sometimes. Cause I mean, it's a, you know, it's a hard business, but like, I know some people where that's all they focus on and nothing good comes of it for their career because they're so mad being, you know, they get bitter, you know, watching other people and they could be doing some of those same things themselves, but they're so used to watching everybody else. They can't even focus on themselves at that point. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a, that's a rough goings. And also just kind of going back to that family analogy, that family might all hate each other oh, right. <laughs> and, exactly. and they yeah. don't speak and uh, you know, right. they have all the money, but good. none of the love. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. They look great, but they all, they can't stand each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You are absolutely right. Cause this is, I've seen, I've seen it many, plenty of times. Sure. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. We're getting close to the end of the conversation and I do this thing called freestyle rapping. Kids seem to like it. So I'm going to freestyle wrap up this conversation and then we'll, uh, we're on the tail end. So okay. hold on. Alma mater, UGA, right? New yes. York City. Yes. Okay. Yes. And then, uh, okay. Comedy. Here we go. Let's go. Let's see. Yo, here we go. Yo, I'm just flowing something that I'm knowing you got to put in work every single day. Blood, sweat, and tears, a whole bunch of years. If you want to go pro, that's what I'm saying. Comedy is work. Don't be a jerk. Don't go berserk. Stay on the road. Stay on the stage. And that's what I say every single day. It's like UGA. We got to go dogs. And that's what I say. Yo, it's your job to come straight through and build your career. Real up in here. Write down some notes. That's how you get really quite dope. And that's what I say. You want to bring that hope. To your freaking family, you got to put it in. That's what I say. You're here to get a win with Mia Jackson. Hear me because I'm rapping. Spit a freestyle. Spring up in action. That's what I'm saying. Freestyle flows. So if you don't know, act like you know. All right. What? All right. There it is. Yes. I, love I was it. only I was, able to. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I got scared. I thought I was going to have to be. I thought I was going to get asked to participate. Thank goodness. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I like hype people on the other end. Be like, yeah, woo. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, I'm not going to. This is his thing. I don't get involved. I just watch. <laughs> there it is. There it is. So very cool. Well, it's been super enlightening to talk to you, Mia. You are a true inspiration. One of the oh. few professional stand-up comedians out there just killing it in the game. You're on the road often, probably in a city near the audience sometime soon. All they got to do is get a fake ID. So g- kids, go get your fake IDs right now. So you're ready. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, but uh, it's not endorsing fake IDs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's good times, good times. So uh, a couple of things. As a person who has dreams, I'm proud of you just going after it and doing it and doing it big and going on the road and being in movies and being on the road with Amy Schumer. That's no small deal. Uh, last comic standing. Wow. It's just, um, I'm really, uh, hopefully you're blushing on the other end. That's my only point of view. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm over here going, I'm like, oh, stop it. Go on. Stop it. Go on. No, no, you forgot about that one other thing. No. Um, <laughs> right. There's so much. Yeah, indeed. So a couple things, obviously we want people to see you, to know more about you and just promote anything that you're up to. But just for the record, it's M-I-A Jackson, yeah. Mia Jackson. Yeah, uh, Mia for, Jackson. So first off, what have you been up to that you kind of want to promote? Anything in particular? Um, uh, let's see. I mean, like, like I said, just look, you know, look out in the fall of 2019 for the Comedy Central half hour. So that's, mm. that's coming out in the fall. And then um, and actually this past fall, September, or was it, no, no, November 2018, I had a, a that thing that came on Epix. So if you have Epix and I think you can still get free trials, you can go and watch, watch that. And other than that, like I'm just out and about on the road. And there's actually another thing that I did that got filmed for um, Comedy Central. It was just under a working title, but that's supposed to be coming out at, at some point as well. You'll see me roaming around. New York doing a the show. They they followed me for a a day, just in my day in the life. So that's coming out at some point. Wow! So, so two things. Too. Yeah. Two things on Comedy Central coming out. Yeah. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Okay, that's that's uh that's pretty fancy. I'm I'm not gonna lie, that's pretty fancy. You know, I feel good about it, you know. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Indeed. Oh, uh, another thing: social media. How and where can people connect with you? On social yeah. media, go through all of them. If you mm-hmm. want to throw out your Pinterest too, we'll see what. You're <laughs> to well, you know, let's just start with the ones that I um. Let's see, you know, I am on. I do have a Facebook fan page, which is just facebook.com and then comedian Mia Jackson. I obviously have a website, miajackson.com, and then I am on Instagram and Twitter at Mia Comedy. Very cool. All right. Well, hopefully everybody connects with you there, and they check you out coming out soon thank you so much for dropping all that knowledge mia you are fantastic uh you're hilarious oh they can find your a bunch of your videos on youtube is that correct yeah there, there's, you know there's a lot of stuff that i did on last tv that's on youtube so yeah absolutely you can find, find some of that stuff yeah. yeah awesome okay well go check that out too mia jackson you're fantastic keep doing what you're doing uh <laughs> Thank Reach you. for the stars, and uh, <laughs> yeah, you're just yeah, yeah. We're proud of you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Okay. Awesome, fantastic. All right, thanks so much. All right, thanks. All right, bye. All right, thanks. Bye.